Okay, well now we're going to be looking at labels. Okay, so we're going to be looking at two different examples. So the first example, we're going to be using this database here. So it's from November 2014. Okay, so let's see the question. So the label question can appear in different formats and we'll look at two different examples here. So we know this is a label because um, it appears in the question a few times. So um, again, the question is muddled up, um, the query and the report. Before we can create the label, we have to create a query first for your labels using the specified fields and the search criteria. Okay, so this is a label question because it says two labels side by side. Okay, um, mice for gamers, so the title mice for gamers at the top of each label. So it's mentioned a few times now it's going to be a label. So the first thing you should do is we need to create the query using the fields shown here. Okay, so if I go to the example, or let's before we do, um, which fields do we need to show? Okay, so make, model, connection, retail press, and news. Okay, we have a calculated field, so we have to um, add 20%. So to add 20% to the cost price, you basically have to multiply by 1.2. Okay, so if you look at here, so I've created a query already. Okay, if I go to design view, I've already entered in the search criteria. Okay, so the search criteria was um, wireless or dual, and the second criteria was gaming and yes. Okay, so if I just show you this, so is it gaming? They wanted you to show yes. And I've also created um, the new field, retail price, cost price, multiplied by 1.2. This would basically add 20% onto the existing price. Okay, so the first part is just like any other report, we select the fields, okay, and then we enter the search criteria. If we have to create a new runtime field, we can do that as well. Um, the second part I'm going to do, um, one step at a time now, I'm going to show my labels which I created earlier. So if I go to print preview, you can see it, they were in two columns. The title um, is, is in a slightly bigger font we have the field names shown as well okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my labels okay so to make the labels what you need to do is click on uh, labels at the top so create labels select two for two columns so two labels side by side by side by side and then we're going to enter the information now. This is where we have to pay close attention. Then we can format um, the label in design view. So let me zoom into this question now. Let's have a look what we have to do for the label report wizard. Okay. So I've done the query, I've selected the fields, I've entered the search criteria, I've created the retail price. Now we're going to create the label. So step one, let's click on create labels. Yeah, let's save the changes. Make sure this is selected as metric. And the format of the labels will be two labels side by side. Okay, so you can select two. Now, when you get to here, always put a title which will appear at the top of the label. So it includes the title Mice for Gamers at the top of each label. Okay enter it says here this show suitable text to identify the fields so what we have to do is we have to write down the name of the field and then send this information across okay so the first field is called make we can put a colon in and then let's send the information across make model so these text so make a model will be constant on every label so you'll see in a second um, this information we're typing now will appear on every label okay the data will change um, according to the different records and notes so I just missed out the S retail underscore price and then whatever the price is 
let's go back to the question and we, what we can do, we can also include a name at this point as well. So has your name, centre number, candidate number at the bottom of each label. So we can insert our candidate details as well. So let me have a look. Name, centre number and candidate number. So centre number. Then my candidate number. Next. Next. Finish. Okay, so if we go back to the question, so let's increase the font of the title, and we should have two label, um, two labels side by side by side, and eight labels per page. So if I zoom out, as you can see, we only have six labels per page. But I'll tell you how to fix that so we get eight labels per page. First of all, let me click on this um, box here. If I click on Home and click on uh, 12 or 14, so I've increased the size of the title. I don't want to cut off any information. If you click on Normal View, you'll see it's in one column, but if you go to a Print Preview, View, you can see it goes back to two columns. Now, to make it fit, eight labels per page what we need to do is we need to close this box here then if we go to print preview you can see we fitted eight labels per page okay um, if I was obviously to do this you can see we fit less labels per page okay so if we go to print preview and let me zoom in so each label has a title at the top the field names, make, model, connection, note, retail price are appearing constantly on every label. Okay, and then you can see the name is at the bottom. Can you see my name is cut off here? So uh, we have a slight problem. So I'm going to move this a little bit up. And then let me move this slightly up. And if I go back to print preview, so maybe I've got to decrease this um, heading, so maybe not so big. And if we go to print preview, it's almost there now, so we just have to um, just increase the size here perhaps. Yeah, so the, my name is appearing, so one, two, three. Yeah, we've got eight labels on each page. So th this example of labels includes the field names. Okay. So if I zoom back out again. So when you're making a label, you start off as a normal query by selecting the fields. You enter the search criteria. Uh, if you have to create a new field for the runtime, you can do. Once you've done that, uh, you go to create okay so if I close this create labels okay so labels is a type of report okay you select the columns so it's typically two columns for the labels then you enter, enter the information that will appear so if it says show suitable text to identify the fields then you have to write in um, the suitable text when you get to this point make sure you include the heading and your full name as well okay if for some reason you don't get an opportunity or you forget to write in your full name at this point you can also insert a label and do it here as well and it will still appear on every um, label that information okay so that's that question now we're going to be looking at another question um, this one was from 2016 now this is slightly different because on this label we don't show the field names and some of the information like the first name and family name will appear on one line so if, a, if you look at this example here this one we had to include the field names okay this question here uh, we're going to produce uh, you're going to prepare attendance badges for meeting produce labels from all data which are arranged in two columns includes employees whose job description contains engineers so this is a search criteria 
and who work in offices in Mumbai or Bangalore. Show only the field's first name, family name on one line with a job description on the next line. So you can create a query using these fields. You, then you can add additional um, fields, okay, search by it, uh, but you can hide it, okay. So include in the heading and the larger size font at the top of each label, manner project development. So you can see here we've not included any field names. So let's have a, let's make this label instead now. Okay, so this is um, the query which I've already done for this label. So as you can see, I created the query to include the relevant fields. So we've got the first name and family name. Okay. We've included the job description. Okay. And we've also got the office because the search criteria, if I go up to the previous slide, um, the search criteria is basically those people who have engineer as part of their job description and who work in an office in Mumbai or Bangalore. So at the moment you can see the office is either in Bang Bangalore or Mumbai. But what we don't want to do, we don't want to show this field so we can hide this field. Um, for the job description we use the like search criteria so to find anything containing engineers you have to put star engineer star. So let me first hide this field. So we select the fields. We've entered our search criteria okay now we're going to move on to creating a label so this is a part where some people may struggle so to create a label we're going to follow the same steps as before so we've got 20 records okay which is fine so we click on create labels now let's look at the question so it's going to be arranged in two columns um, so we can select two again we're going to include a suitable title so include this heading in a larger font size at the top of each label manner project development so manner project development press enter to get to the next line okay show only the fields first name and family name on one line so let's go to here so we want to show first name and family name on one line with the job description on, on the next line in this question it does not mention um, to, to write in suitable text to identify identify the field so what you have to do is simply click on first name space family name family name next line job description so we're not having to type in the field names on this question Okay, uh, include your centre number and candidate number at the bottom of each label. Okay, next, next, finish. Okay, and as with um, any label, most of the time you have to create or increase the title. Okay, if I go back to here, so it's in two columns, yep, we selected that. The search criteria is completed first name and family name were on one line job description on the next line uh, we have a heading manner project development which has been increased and the name which is at the bottom okay so if I close this box here and then we go to print preview it's not been specific how many labels per page so let's try and fit as many as we can so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this will print over two pages Okay, so this label was different to the other label. The other label included um, the field names. So if I go back, you can see we included the field names because it says show suitable text to identify the fields. The second label we did, we didn't include the field names. Okay. And um, if I go back to the question, I forgot to mention sometimes when they give you a diagram, showing you the number of labels on the page so we've got two across um, eight in total then what you'd have to do is um, make sure it's eight labels fitting for the, uh, for the page so you have to follow the guidance provided by the diagram so let me see how many we've got here so that's eight per page
So sometimes if you do have a diagram, you can follow the diagram. Right, so that's the labels done. That's, we, we looked at two different examples, one including field names, one that doesn't include field names. Okay, now we're going to be looking at the summary query. Okay, so we're going to be looking at this example. So let's look at a question. Find only micro eco cars that have been sold in Madrid. Using a selection, produce a new report which shows only the salesperson, model and price. Okay, the key parts of the summary query is you got the two key words. Calculate the total value of these sales for each person and count the number of these cars sold by the salesperson. Now, actually, before we do this example, I'm going to load up the movie database and show you a summary query on the movie database, and then we can do this example. Okay, so what we want to do in the movie database is basically work out the number of movies sold by genre, so by uh, different genres, action, adventure, comedy. We want to find out how many movies were sold by genre. Okay, and then we want to find out the individual uh, movies per genre as well. So each record is a movie. So to create a summary query, we click on create, query wizard, okay, we select the genre and then the sold field. The sold field or the field which we use as part of the summary query needs to contain numerical values. So this data can be calculated. So the sold field does contain integer values. Next, now we need to click on summary. If we go back to this um, question or PowerPoint here, the two keywords are calculate and count. So what we want to calculate is the total number of movies sold per genre and then we want to count each record. Each record will be a movie. So if I click on next, just write a title, some one. Um, this time I'm going to click on finish but the next example I will be clicking on modify. So this is a straightforward example of a summary query. What we have is each genre. We have 20 different movies which have sold 328 copies okay for the action genre now what we're going to be looking at is uh, this question here so let me see which one it was so we're using this database here so let me show you what it's meant to look like at the end so we have salespeople so we've got five salespeople okay one two three four five the model they've sold is micro echo Okay, so Sanchez, for example, has sold 15 cars, and the value of 15 cars is 195,000. Okay, so let's make this from scratch. If I go to my question, so if I zoom in, I'm going to ignore the first part, and we'll come to that because uh, the second part we have to do the search criteria. But let's focus on the actual summary query part. I know it's a summary query because it says calculate and count. The price field contains numerical values which can be calculated. So we're going to create a query, summary query to include a salesperson, model and price. Okay, so create query wizard. If we go to all of the data, uh, salesperson, no, salesperson, model and price. Let me double check. So salesperson, model and price, yep, we got that. Next, summary, summary options. So what we want to do is tick this box, which will calculate the total value of these sales for each salesperson. And then the next box, count. So we go down here, the number of these cars sold by each salesperson. So you click on this option here. Then if I click on OK. Next, this time I want to modify before I do anything else, okay? And I'll explain why. So if we type in someone, the reason I want to modify this data is now because we have some search criteria. So find only the micro echo cars. So that's going to be the model. So if I go under model, I type in micro, let me just check the spelling again. I'm just not sure. Uh, micro echo. Okay, that's the first search criteria cars which have been sold so we want to add sold but then hide that field okay so we can say yes but we don't want to show this sold in Madrid so we can have the location as Madrid 
So this is probably a more uh, complicated example of a summary query. So if I include location, and then if I click on run, one second, um, no, no, for the search criteria, it wasn't not meant to type location, I was meant to type Madrid. That was a bit weird. Uh, let me try that again. So let me check the spelling. MAD, yep, I'm happy that. Now what we have, we have the salespeople, they sold the, this model, um, this was the value of the, all the cars that they sold, and this guy, Sanchez, sold 15 cars in total. Sometimes when you do make the summary query, you may have to extract it either into a Word document. If you're making a graph, then you have to extract it into Excel. Uh, you can click on these options here, and it'll open this table in Excel. So maybe you have to extract this data to create a graph in Excel. Okay, and let's say you want to select this column, you press Control, and maybe this column here, then you can make a bar chart. Right, so that's a summary query. So that was quite a challenging example of a summary query, which included some search criteria. The last slide, finally we've made it. We're going to be extracting some data. And as you can see here later, the extract would go into Word. Okay. Okay, we'll just zoom into the question. So before we make the extract, okay, uh, just let me zoom out. To extract a query or report, you have to, okay, let's, that's the second part. Before we can make the extract, we have to make the query. So what you do, you select the fields, so course code, level, and activity. Okay, and then you put a search criteria in, so containing snow or ice. Um, we'll have a look at the information in a second. Um, we can do the sort from now in a query because we're not going to go to the report. Okay, so if I come to the example, I've already opened now. So I've already created a query, I selected the fields, and then I've typed in the search criteria. So because we have more than one um, piece of information here, the search criteria we wanted to find um, containing snow or ice. So we basically had to write snow and stars, start the start, start at the end, or ice. Okay, so if I, if I look at this example here, so we either have snow or we have ice. If we go to design view, okay, so we've done star, snow, star, or star, ice, and then like automatically it comes. The location was in Scotland, and the type is going to be thrill. Okay, we don't want to show these fields, so we can hide these fields. Now, if I want to extract this information into the document we created initially, what we need to do is, ex is export. Okay, so to export, you have to right click on this data, click on export to RTF. So if I go back to access, so the first part, this is not the right one, um, the first part which is like making any other query, selecting the fields, putting a search criteria in. If I want to put this into a Word document, I can go to right click on extract, export, Word RTF file. You can double click on these options here, or you can choose where you want to save this to. And then this will open up the Word document. Okay. Here we go. Um, before you copy and paste in, just fix the columns, okay? Uh, and then you can copy this into your Word document. So simply copy and paste into the document you want to copy into. So we've come to the end of the database um, presentation. So we've covered all of these topics. Hopefully these videos are useful. Please show your support to the channel. Please subscribe. Please like and share this content. Thank you again for your time.